Hi there, it's uh, John Crow here, and we're doing another live link here tonight. Um, this is going to be really simple here. We're going to do a couple of really simple dishes. I guess we're all kind of housebound now at the moment, and this is just so we can cook, as the, the name of the title is, comfort food. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very simple and easy uh, wheat and bread. I'm going to make a little bit of uh, vegetable soup, and I hope to make like a kind of homemade tomato uh, sauce there as well. Okay, so tomato sauce. Uh, vegetable soup and we're also going to make uh, some wheat and bread okay so if the camera just comes back around there we're going to start very simple with our wheat and bread so this is a really really uh, simple wheat and bread recipe um, I have made this before um, there may be a video on the channel already uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to see a wealth of videos there that I've created uh, to help you with your cooking and to show you a range of techniques and skills that will help you in the kitchen so we're going to start with this here. So what I have here is I have some uh, soda bread flour, so I have about 200 grams. I have some wholemeal flour, about 100 grams. I have some porridge oats, they're going to be just used for decoration. About 25 grams of uh, sugar, and I have about a teaspoon of baking powder, a little bit of melted butter or margarine, whichever, and then I have some buttermilk, and I have a little bit, tiny little bit of chive in there as well. Now, you could use buttermilk, if you don't have buttermilk, that's no problem. You can make your own. Basically, if you get uh, your milk and you put like some lemon juice into it and you leave it for about 10 minutes, it'll kind of curdle and thicken uh, and it'll give you the same effect there as buttermilk. Or you could use a mixture of like milk and yogurt or creme fraiche or any of those are gonna work really, really well with this if you can get your hands on some buttermilk. Okay, so I'm gonna make a start here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sieve all my ingredients Okay, so you just add in the flour here, soda bread flour, and then, and this is just for, as we would say, aeration. And mise en place, as we would say as well, is really, really important. And that means just getting everything organized. You can see I have everything organized, just like you would see on TV. I've got everything organized there before I start. So what I'm doing now is I'm just sieving everything, giving it a quick sieve. Now I will be left with the bran here at the end, and that's okay, I'm just gonna tip that in. So I'm just going to pass this through here. Like I said, it aerates my mix, uh, makes it nice and light. Also as well, we can see there if there's anything that's undesirable that shouldn't be in there, it'll get caught obviously in the sieve. And once I put this through here, everything will go through and I'll be just left with the bran and I'm just going to tip the bran in. We're nearly there. This is so simple, so easy to make. I make a couple of loaves of this a week at the house and the family really love it. Uh, you can freeze this as well, so it's really good. So there's our bran here. We're just going to tip our bran in there like that. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so we're just going to give it uh, a little mix. I have a little spoonula here, and I use it so much. It's a fantastic little item to have. Again, they're part of my mise en place there. I have pre-greased my little, uh, it's a pound loaf tin. And then I'm going to add in. Now, when you're adding in the buttermilk here, you just add in enough to get like a drop in consistency. So we'll add in that much. I always put in some, and we can always add more, but it's kind of difficult to take it out. There we go, so just add that in, just add another bit. There we go. Just get it to come together. It's starting to look good. And I just melted the butter, if you wanted to, you could have, um, get that in there. you could have also, um, you could have also, uh, worked in your butter if you wanted it but i've just elected here just to melt it it's just easier this makes it a little bit richer there we add a little bit of butter or margarine whichever you want into it there and then we just work this a little bit more don't want to don't want to overwork it now either there we go we're just about there i'm just working my butter like i said to make it rich and like i said i have my oven is preheated there i have it at about one 75 180 and i'm going to give this about 40 minutes so here we go into our tin and what i would usually do is i would weigh my ingredients the night before and then it's just a matter of adding in my buttermilk in the morning because i would have everything and we just pop that down there like that and it'll it'll take on the shape of our tin anyway so that's not out. How easy, how quick this is, and homemade 
brown bread, there's nothing better. And then we just got a score there like that, just with my knife. And then we just have some, just a little bit of decoration on top there. There we go. There's a few. And that's ready, I'm gonna pop that in the oven now. I'm gonna give it about 40, 45 minutes, and we'll forget about it, okay? So we'll just have a quick tidy down there. And if you want to just take a look at the ingredients there that we're gonna be using for our um, vegetable soup. So I have some root veg here, um, I just have some carrots, and I have some celery, I have some leek, I have potatoes going to be my thickening agent, and some onion there as well, that we're just going to talk about there now in a second. There we go, just tidy down, always keep your, your kitchen tidy, really, really important. And I'm using some uh, chicken stock here as well that I'm going to be adding in as well, uh, and that's going to be my uh, uh, liquor. Okay, so we're going to bring this over here while our bread's in the oven, and we're going to continue on. Okay, like I said, just tidy down, keep it very tidy. Okay, so we're just going to pop this here, and I'm just going to get my gas on. Again, preheating, getting everything organized. It's all, always really important there when you are cooking. So we'll just get that in. A little bit of oil there. Okay. It's in there and that's just going to warm up. You could use butter as well or a mixture of uh, oil and butter. If I'm using oil and butter then I will always uh, put the oil in first because obviously oil has a higher burning temperature than butter and then I would add the butter for the flavour. Okay so I have um, already uh, prepped some of this veg as you can see here but I'm just going to continue on here. Another little bit of carrot. Again then you see we have a round carrot. I would always kind of cut it in half or cut it so it's kind of flat if you want to work with it because obviously it's not going to move now. It's just a little kind of a safety aspect. And then we'll just chop these down. We're just chopping these like rough, okay? Or like a miracle, as we would say in the kitchen industry. And there's nothing better than homemade soup. And especially uh, if we make it today, uh, it'll be better tomorrow. If you can just leave it overnight, the flavors will even develop then and the soups always taste better the next day, okay? Now you can make this with chicken stock or with vegetable stock. It's really, it's up to you, uh, whichever you want. Uh, you can make your own vegetable stock as well if you wanted to, or you can make your own chicken stock. Usually what I would do is I'll buy a whole chicken, I would remove all the skin or as much skin as I can, I would put it into a pot, put it in my mirepoix, which would be like carrot, leek, onion, celery, cover with cold water and then just let it simmer away. And then once it's cooked then, just take it out. Um, uh, I'll have my chicken then, I can use it for sandwiches, or I can use it up in a curry, or whatever the case may be, or a chicken a la king, or something like that. And then you have this beautiful stock, that is, you know, obviously rich, uh, it's homemade, and that can be used then for pies, it can be used for making uh, balute sauces, and it can be used for soups and stuff like that. So fantastic there, and you're getting two items out of you getting your stock and you're going to be having your chicken then that you can process on as well so really really good a little bit of leek here so generally I would always kind of cut my leek down um, because you can get dirt there between the layers okay it gets trapped so we just pop that like that and then we just shred and then we will give that a little wash down in a second there so again there you can see it's really really important uh, slow and steady there when you're chopping. If you just focus on that there for a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop these in a sieve. And then we're just going to give these a little wash. And my pot is starting to heat up there as we know in the background. So never leave pots uh, unattended there. So if you just focus again on the bench there for a second. I'll just give these a little wash. So I'm just going to pop that leak straight in. And again there we're here in the sizzle straight away, which is really, really important. And I've got a little bit of uh, celery. Just be careful now because um, in Ireland and the UK here, celery is one of the 14 allergens. So uh, if you want to leave it out, you can. I'll just pop that in. And what I'm also going to do is, I have an onion here. I want to, just want to show you the technique of the onion here. So if you just want to stay with the onion there, well, I just pop in the rest of these carrots. So if I'm making a vegetable soup, I generally try and have equal quantities of my, my uh, vegetables, yeah? 
So you have like two, 250 grams of each, or something like that, maybe two pints of stock. Okay, so the onion here is really, really important here that we want to just show you that skill of how to chop an onion. Again, I do have a video, a standalone video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to see this video. So really, really simple, peel the onion. I always kind of peel my onions whole so that we can, um, it, it keeps it together. And generally in a kitchen then, our, our commercial kitchen or professional kitchen, we would always have onions pre-peeled like this. So it just saves one of our jobs here. So we want the root. The root's really important there that you keep the root on because the root is going to keep your onion together. So we cut in half there first and you'll see, I'll put that over there out of the way. So you'll see here that obviously the root holds all the layers of the onion together. Okay, so we want, that's really, really important that we keep that on if we're going to be dicing the onion. And I'm just going to take this opportunity here now tonight just to show you. So you almost have the, uh, the root pointing away from me. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some lines and we want to make sure we have like an invisible line about three quarters of the way back that we don't pass. And we just go straight down with the knife, just like that. Okay. Just on, and you can make these lines as thick or as thin as you want, depending on how fine you want the dice. Turn it to the side, and now we're going to do levels. Okay, so level one, level two, level three. If the onion was bigger, you might have another level. And then the onion's still all held together, as you can see. And now we just chop and it all falls away nicely, finely diced, okay? And then you're just left with a root and generally you keep your root then for soups and stocks. We're making a soup so we can just chop that up. But that was just an opportunity there just to show you, look at that, perfectly finely diced there. Really, really nice, really, really simple. And again, we'll just do the other half. Again, I'll not do this maybe as fine just to show you, it's all about how close you put the lines together. Just put these a little bit further apart. And we do our levels. Level one, level two, level three. And we just put them a little bit thicker. But see the way the onion just holds together and then just falls together at the end. Again, perfectly diced, really easy to do. And it's a really good skill. Okay, so we've got that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna Pop these on and I'll take these off here. So my potatoes, this will be my thickening agent obviously as well because this is going to be a puree vegetable soup. I'll just pop my onion on here and then I'm going to put that in my pot just to get it sweating off. And it's really important when we're making a vegetable soup as well. Just add all that in there. Now, we want to sweat off all this veg. So this veg is going to, we want to extract the flavor. So in order to do that, we need to do this. We need to put a lid on it. Really important we put a lid on, because that's going to create some steam, okay? And that's really important, and that's what we want. We want to create steam to soften our veg and to help cook it out and extract the flavor, okay? So when you're making a puree soup, you need to extract the flavor, you extract the flavor by sweating off your veg, okay? Now, while I'm waiting here, I'm just going to get my potatoes chopped, and I'm going to chop these up just rough, and just pre-peel these. Like I said, now, you can put a wealth of other vegetables into this, um, but I wouldn't generally put turnip or parsnip into a puree soup because they're quite strong in flavor and they generally would take over the flavor of the soup, okay? Uh, you could put butternut squash, would be quite nice. Again, just remember that that will help thicken it, so either leave out your spuds or use small quantities or uh, be aware that you're going to reduce the quantity of potatoes that you're going to put in because obviously the sweet potato will thicken it as well. Okay, so just be aware of that. So what we're going to do there now is we have to sweat off. We need to keep the lid on there for a couple of minutes. I have my stock here that I'm just going to reboil here at the back. And then I'm going to show you another thing that we would always, in I suppose a, a catering operation or a professional kitchen, we would always produce or make a bouquet garni. Okay, so we just come back over here and I have the ingredients here for that and I'm just going to show you a bouquet garni. So a bouquet garni is really, really important. Okay, um, you can buy these again and they come in like little tea bags. Uh, my mom would always use them. Uh, you just buy them as a little packet of tea bags and you add them into your stew, add them into your soup and they're really, really good. Um, but you can make your own. And I'm going to tell you right now how to do it. 
Okay, so we just want to keep our area clean. So it's really important there, clean as you go. Always work from something into something, and then there's less hassle. Keep your area tidy. Okay, so bulky gun is really, really simple. Now you can use a variety of vessels um, to hold the ingredients. I have some thyme, I have some bay leaf, and I have some peppercorns here. If you have fresh, if you have a bay leaf tree, fresh, fantastic. If you have some peppercorns, which are white or black, fantastic. If you have some fresh thyme, uh, fantastic as well. I'm using dried here tonight, as you can see. And I'm going to make a little parcel just using tinfoil. Now, again, you could use uh, muslin, you could use um, a, a kind of tea bag. I have seen like little just empty tea bags that you can buy and you can put them into it. Uh, like, like we get your, your tea in, um, but generally, or the old fashioned way again, would you use a piece of leek and a piece of celery and you wrap it one and the other and tie it with string and then you would put it in and tie it to the side of your pot so you don't lose it. Um, this works fine as well, it doesn't affect the flavour. Okay, and um, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to encase these, I'll make a little parcel, just fold it over, fold it over again, and then just twist the end so it looks like a sweet. Okay, and then we just want to get our knife, and all we want to do with a knife is just put a hole either side to allow the flavour to come out. That's it. And we have that ready then, and that will go into our soup once we add our stock. So we just want to check our soup, so we can see we have our steam coming out there, because that's what we want. Now we want to sweat off our veg, or soften our veg there, but what we don't want to do is we don't want to colour it, okay? And that's really, really important. There's no flour in this either, okay? Doesn't need to be flour because I have my thickening nations here, like I said, which are my potatoes, okay? Stock is coming back up the heat in, in the back there, and that's gonna be fantastic. And uh, I've no seasoning in there at the moment. I will put a little bit of seasoning on in a minute, but I am going to hold on there now at the moment, okay? Um, we'll just take a quick look at my bread. Yes, my bread, I'll just take a quick look. You can see it in the oven there. Don't want to keep the door open. I will turn that around as well. That is a... Um, a fan oven, but I will be turning that around um, just so it gets an even heat. And you want to kind of keep it on the top there as well. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, it's been really, really busy here. I suppose um, everybody's been affected by Corona here at the moment. Um, I'm based in Northern Ireland here, and again, it seems to be affecting everybody in some way. I hope you're all very staying safe and you're all well and you're looking after each other out there. Uh, it's really important that you do. I think, again, it's very important there that we um, implement social distancing, distancing and it's really important there that we kind of um, look after each other at this special time. Um, I hope everybody's okay and uh, keep in touch. Post some comments there if you want. Tell me where you are. Tell me how you're doing. I'd love to hear from you. Um, again, then, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It's really, really important. I'm trying to grow the community. And with your help, then, it would be really helpful if you would... Uh, click on that button, click on subscribe, hit the bell, so then when I put up new content, and I'm generally putting up a video every week, um, and there will be more of these live links coming, so um, it all depends on you, I need your help, um, and if you have ideas, um, I do have some of my subscribers who are very good, and they're always posting comments and ideas uh, on what they'd like to see, and um, a shout out to Carol there, he uh, messaged me there last week about doing a fun potato, and I stuck the video up for him, and he had some great feedback there about it, and I appreciate that, and I thank you for that. So, I have a third dish here that I'm going to bring over here that I'm going to show you, and it's really, really simple, and it's just a um, tomato sauce, okay? So, you can see here, um, yes, we do use tins in kitchens from time to time. I've also put some fresh here as well, because I just wanted to talk about that. And remember, we have things going on, always keep an eye on them, okay? Don't forget about things. Don't leave uh, pots unattended, which is really important, that's for my health and safety. Another tip here as well, I would always say, when you're working with a pot like that, if you have a steam in there, a steam burn can be really sore. So what I generally do when you're taking your lid off, I would just vent the steam so it goes out the back. You don't do it that way because obviously the steam is going to come into your face and we don't want that. Again then, you can see another thing, keep my area tidy here. You can see I have a little tray here at the side or a dish or a plate, whatever you want there, just to put my spoon on uh, and it just keeps uh, my bench or my top there nice and clean there as well. Okay, so just coming back to um, this tomato sauce. I have some fresh tomatoes here, just to talk about those. First of all, fresh tomatoes, yes, you can make a tomato sauce with fresh tomatoes. You want to use a good quality tomato. These are just regular tomatoes, like double M's and stuff like that. 
but if you have uh, uh, beef tomatoes or plum tomatoes or something like that, really, really good flavor, and it's gonna be a more consistent product. But the thing about cans is they don't go off, they have a long shelf life, um, there is a really consistent uh, flavor and product in them, and it makes sense to use them basically, because there's loads of flavor in them. We are going to, um, I am going to put some fresh in it today, I'm going to put some onion, I am going to give it a little boost here with just some tomato puree here as well. I'm also going to put a little bit of garlic in there, and I have a little bit of sugar. I would always put a little bit of sugar into my tomato sauce at the end for two reasons. First reason is to, uh, for flavor, uh, to counteract the acidity in the tomatoes, um, and it just balances it out. Another thing you could do is, what we would do in the kitchen is we would make a gastric, and the gastric is just a mixture um, of uh, vinegar and sugar, and you boil it up, so it's kind of a sweet sour effect to it, and we would add some of that into our tomato sauce at the end, but sugar will do you fine, and that's what I'm using here tonight. Other additions that you could put into this as well is maybe some fresh chili, if you want a little bit of kick in there, a little bit of spice, um, or you could use some uh, dried chili seeds if you want, it's up to you. Um, I'm just going to make plain standard tomato sauce here today. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a start. Again, we're going to be reinforcing what I told you earlier about um, dicing our tomato. Again, we're dicing our tomato, so invincible line with three quarters way back. We put our lines down along the way like that. Now this, obviously, I'm a little bit quick here, but obviously I've been doing this quite a while. There, like that. And I'm cutting this. I don't have to dice it really because this is again going to be a puree here tonight. So I'm chopping the whole thing up like that. Okay. And the other half, again, visible line there, about three quarters way back. Just run our knife down, layers up. One, two, three. And then we just chop. See where the onions held together there, and it just breaks down nicely. Okay, so we're going to use all that, and what I'm going to do is I'll just get a little bowl here, so you just stay with me there for two seconds. I'll just get my onion out, like so. And I'm going to do a little bit of garlic, and again I'll show you a little tip. I'm do some garlic. So I sweat off my veg, I'm just going to add in my stock, you know, like so, and I'm going to add in my tomatoes, or sorry, my potatoes, and there we go. So you're just going to get that on there, it's going to be really good, and we get it back up to the boil, and then we'll turn it down to a simmer, and I'm also going to add my bokeh garni in there now as well, and we just make sure that's submerged there, and that is my soup on, couldn't be simpler. Let's get rid of that pot. Okay, so soup is on, turn off our gas at the back. What I'm also going to do here, at this point here, I'm just going to turn that bread. You can see that bread there, it's rising up there, it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to pop that back. I'll put a little time on that, maybe 20 minutes. It is going to take about 40 minutes, I would say, for the bread. But there we go. Okay, so garlic, yeah, garlic's a very uh, useful product, uh, very easy to use. You could buy a paste. Uh, but I think it's better if you can use always use fresh. So what we're going to do is we're just going to prep this. We just cut this in half. Uh, some people say you should take out the center if it's kind of greenish. Okay, I'm just going to take the center out there. I like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to need a little bit of salt now in a second. So what? Well, first of all, we just give it a little chop. And when you're chopping there, just another tip there uh, that every chef kind of knows. When we're chopping, right, what we want to do is we want to make the claw, is what we would say. The claw is really, really important. Uh, so that the side of the knife, you're not, you, you're not chopping like that, so you're, you're hitting the tips of your fingers. You want this, that side there, the knuckle there, just hitting the side of the blade there. So the fingertips are always bent back. They're never in the way. They're never going to get cut and you're controlling the flow of the knife back along. So that's really, really important. So you can see this here. So I'm just controlling how thin those slices are and how little or how fast I'm moving back along. Okay, so we give our garlic uh, a little chop and then we need some salt. Now we need salt because we're going to puree this, okay? Now you can buy the little uh, garlic press that would puree, but it always leaves garlic in it, whereas this, there's going to be absolutely 
no way. So again, we give our garlic a little chop, and that just gets the uh, salt to mix in with the garlic. And you can't see it, but the garlic starts, when you chop it, it starts to release some of its juice, some flavor. And obviously when you put the salt on there, it sticks to all that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mince. So turn your blade to the side, hold it, this hand nice and firm. This hand here, I keep it together and I push. So this hand moves like this, and this hand pushes down. And all I do is I mince. And I just move back along. And you can see we're mincing it there. And the salt is the friction that we want. Okay, we just give it a little scrape there, just bring it back together. Okay, and I just will give it another go. That's really easy to do. A little bit of practice, it looks good as well. Because the last thing you want is garlic stuck in your teeth. And you can see that, let's scrape it up. And we have a beautiful garlic puree. Yeah. And there's no lumps and bumps in it. You do it once more again if you want. And every time you do it, it just gets finer. Where's it gone? And then we scrape it. And we have garlic puree. There you go. Beautiful. Okay, really easy. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to move pots here just for a second here. So we're going to move this to the back. Like so. Somewhere away. And so you'll be able to see what's happening here. Just move this pot to the front. And this is going to be for my onion. And my garlic to sweat off for. So a little bit of oil in there. And we're going to get our garlic in, our garlic and the onion in there to sweat off for our tomato sauce. Again, there we want to. So, and what we want to do is we just want to sweat that off there. Again, without color. So we can just get our gas up here. And that's just going to cook on our garlic, bring out the flavor there. And that's really nice. And I'll just have a wipe down there, because it's really, really important. We keep our area tidy and we clean as we go. So just some toilet paper here. Right. So like I said, the other ingredients here is going to be our uh, tin tomatoes, some fresh tomatoes there as well, a little bit of uh, sugar, and some tomato puree. So these here, these tomatoes have been pre-washed. So I'm just going to cut these in quarters. Just cut the little center out there, or the eye. Like so, okay, that's that there. Pop them there. It's just very important there that you just wash your ingredients before you would use them. Let's chop it once more. They are going to break down once we add them anyway. So I'll add probably add a little bit of water into this as well. So this is a fantastic sauce. You can freeze this sauce. Fantastic with some uh, pasta for family. And kids, every kid loves pasta. So, again, there, just control your heat there. We don't want to get really any color on this. So I'll just add one of those oil in there. And the amazing flavor of the garlic and the onion there just wafts in the way there. It's really, really nice. And that's what you want. So you just want to control your heat. Really, really important. Our soup is. Fantastic, it's working away there. And we'll turn that down to simmer. So it just simmers away. You're talking really about 30 minutes, 35 minutes there for the soup. Again then, if you want to do, we're going to puree this um, a little gun here on the side. And then you could add a little bit of cream into it as well at, at the end if you wanted it. Or you could just chill it down and then freeze it. And you have it for a later date. So again there, we're just sweating down our onions there. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, add my tomatoes, fresh tomatoes.
We just got a little, little twist of pepper in here. Now, you know, I know you're all thinking that I haven't seasoned my soup. I'm going to check the consistency and the flavor then and season of my soup just at the end there. Okay. Just want them to break down a little bit. As well then, um, it's like when you're making a stock. I would always um, put a little bit of tomato puree here again there just to aid the flavor. That. Okay. Now I would put it in there because I like to kind of cook it out just to cook out the rawness out of the tomato puree. The same when I'm making stocks and stuff like that. Um, I would always um, roast my vegetables, roast my bones if I'm making a brown stock, chicken stock or a meat stock. I would brown the bones um, and I would dab some tomato puree on the bones and then I would roast off my vegetables and I would also add some tomato puree to my vegetables as well, just to roast off, just to bring out, to kind of cook out the tomato puree and bring out that flavor. So I'm just going to cook that out a little bit there, just to get them coming down there so we can get a lovely um, flavor to our sauce. Like I said, if I want to add some chili to that, some fresh chili, um, or some dried chili flakes to that, I could, and that would give it a real oomph and a real kick. Um, so I am going to be putting in some uh, tomatoes here now, uh, chopped tomatoes here as well now in a second. Again, then I'm going to be keeping the um, sugar till the end, so I'll just leave this over here. And it's nice to have everything just organized there, like I said. It's just easier way of working. Organization is key, as we say in the kitchen. So, um, it's just really, really nice. Okay, just have a little look at my bread. The yak is looking good there at the moment. Um, I'll just turn down the heat a little bit. Now we just lift that quickly. Now again, I could put a bulk of yarny into this if I wanted to. Um, but I'm not here tonight. I'm just going to keep it really, really simple. Um, don't forget to, um, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear some questions from you. Um, if, if you're there, give us a shout out and let me know that you're there. Um, these are really easy to do. It's, it's nice to be able to cook in your, in your home kitchen uh, and be able to pass on some um, trade secrets, if you want to call them that, or some tips there to help you with your cooking. Again, any food that's homemade is generally nicer. Again, then you can control exactly what goes into it. You've seen there already what I've put into my bread. You've seen there exactly what I've put into my soup. I've hidden nothing. You're in control of the ingredients. You're in control of additives. There are practically none. Um, so that's really, really important as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do to this now is I'm just going to add my tomatoes here. So I've got my tin tomatoes. There's one. Put that to the side. And you can see, you know, you have a really luxurious and dark and rich tomato color that we all expect there from the tomatoes. I'm also going to get a little drop of water in there just to help that along as well. Now, if you wanted to, again, there, you could put a vegetable stock cube into that if you wanted to. But I think there's going to be loads of flavor in there. So we're going to get that up to the boil. And then we'll turn it down. Okay, so this is the point when I'm in my own kitchen, as I am here now, and I'm cooking that I can have a cup of tea because I have all, or coffee, or a glass of water, whatever you would like, because all the hard work has been done because preparation is key. As you've seen there, when I started the evening there, um, I had all my bits and pieces organized, I had all my ingredients weighed out to make my bread. Um, I had all my ingredients ready then to make my soup. And I had all my ingredients organized and equipment, because that's part of it as well, organized there to make my uh, tomato sauce. And that's really, really important. Uh, anytime you're, you're, you're going to cook, it's like a military operation. Um, you, have a, you follow a recipe, you have a method, um, and that is the key to success. The key to success, like I said, is being organized. Um, obviously, kitchens are, are highly organized places. They put out hundreds of thousands of meals, depending on the operation every day. So it is really, really important that everybody knows their job, that everybody gets on, that everybody is focused on the one goal, and that is the success of the operation. Okay, so... My soup is coming up. Again, like I said, home food or homemade food is, and comfort food is 
fantastic. We all love the childhood memories where your mum um, or your granny or whatever the case may be, they either made the fresh pasta or they, made the, they went out and picked the apples uh, during, during the year um, and they brought them back in and you made an apple tart or they picked the fresh rhubarb or they picked the plums or whatever the case may be or you made jams and stuff like that. So those are the childhood memories that you probably grew up on and it's real comforting then when you get to taste that food and when you sit down and when you share food. So that's really, really important. Sharing is really uh, collaborative, it's really part of the family and we should all be involved in it. And this is again then because of this corona and everything that's happening in the world at the moment, I just thought it would be really, really nice tonight to, to uh, make this video, to go live, just to show you a couple of simple dishes there that you can make with, don't need a lot of ingredients. And it is sharing, it is sharing bread across the table, it is sharing a bowl of uh, homemade soup and it just brings community um, and it brings us back together and shows us what I guess is important in the world, yeah, is uh, looking out for one, one another. So that's why again I'm kind of making this tonight. So we have a little look at our soup here at the back here. It's bubbling away there nicely. Now you've got to be careful there because if it's boiling too fast, you are going to have evaporation. That's evaporation there, okay? So that is, the liquor is coming to the boil, and then it is evaporating, turning to steam, and that's where you're gonna lose your liquor. So you, that's why another point, another point, you don't want something boiling, per se, especially soup like that. You want it simmering because you're gonna have too much evaporation or too much loss of stock, okay, or liquid, and you're gonna to have to possibly top it up, and then you kind of dilute and possible. You just want to kind of simmer it away, okay? So tomato sauce is coming up. Be careful again when you're stirring. I have a nice white spotless and clean jacket on, but tomatoes, splashes from tomatoes can be quite difficult to get out there. So um, I'm just being quite gentle there. And that looks really, really nice there. So that's only gonna need maybe about 15 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna get it to come up to the boil, turn it down and let it simmer for about 15 minutes. And then what we can do is we can, uh, we can get that pureed. Our soup, like I said, will take another, it's going to take another little bit there before I uh, want to break it down. And my bread there, um, I'll just check this bread here as well, about 10 minutes the same there. Just want to go look at it there. Yeah, it's looking quite good there. Again, let me just push the top and get how we feel it. I'm also going to show you a little tip that you can do in your own kitchen at home. My mom does it. And we did it. Um, if you check out the video, we have two fantastic videos that we made of my mum there at Christmas. One is about the ultimate Christmas pudding, and the other is the ultimate Christmas cake. And I was under instruction that day with my mum. She showed me and she shared her, her secret recipe there for the ultimate Christmas cake and the Christmas pudding. And I urge you to check out those videos, they're really, really good. But um, she, she showed me how she would check um, to make sure the cake is done. Um, and this is okay that you can do at home in your own kitchen but you cannot really do it in a professional kitchen. So what you would do to check that it's done, you would use a skewer or you could use a knife and you would stick it down. I'll show you this now in a second. You stick it down into the item and then what you do is you put it along your bottom lip. Now obviously it's not very professional because obviously you have bacteria on different orifices and stuff like that, on your nose, your ears, your mouth, your hands and stuff like that. So it's really important again, like the Corona, that we wash our hands regularly and we stay spotlessly clean when we're working in the kitchen. Um, so it's okay at home then, yeah, if you want to do that, uh, but not in a professional kitchen. We would use a probe. So I would have a probe up here. So this is one of my probes here. And again, and that will tell us then, you know, it's digital. It'll show you they're really a uh, simple item that every kitchen should have just to make sure. Uh, your items are cooked and they are safe to eat and stuff like that. Uh, and this is another way of checking that our bread is done. Um, I'm going to go with mum's old fashioned one here this evening just to show you. But again, I urge that you do it at home if you want, but not in a, in a professional setting. Okay, so my tomato sauce there is coming up to the boil there. I'm just going to let it simmer away there for a few minutes. Um, again, then I'm using onion here tonight just because I guess I had onion here. Um, you could use a shallot as well. A shallot would be quite nice. A shallot is a little bit milder in flavour, um, not maybe as, as, as strong as onion. Um, and there's different varieties there. You could use red onion, but um, it's kind of sweet and stuff like that. It's mild in flavour as well. Um, like I said, I could have had a bokeh garni in there as well. It would be quite nice. 
Uh, I could have put some fresh basil in there or even some pesto at the end, would really lift that as well and really make it really a uh, really nice uh, product. Um, but again, I'm just going to keep this really simple because the kids like it, just a plain tomato sauce. Again, then once this has been chilled, it can be uh, frozen. And, and that is something we can think about there if you make too much of it. Um, and where we are at the moment, we don't really know where we're going, if we're going to have, um, uh, be able to source items in the, um, in the stores. So it might do any harm there. These are three perfect items there that you can make in advance and you can freeze. I always have a loaf of wheat and bread in the freezer. I always have some soup, homemade soup in the freezer, and I always have some um, tomato sauce in the freezer that we can take out and defrost and we have. So um, I've got my son here behind the camera here tonight and he's helping me out. Uh, how long are we running there now, Benjamin? 40 minutes. About 40 minutes, we're running about 40 minutes. That's really, really good here. Um, we're doing really well. Again, I'm going to give this another couple of minutes and then I'm going to check just to see is it ready. Uh, I'm going to take a little look at my soup. There we go, just open it away from me again so you don't get a little corn. And that's boiling away. All you want to make sure is that your items are cooked. Okay, so. Mm. So the carrots are cooked. Always make sure you take out your bulky garlic. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to puree this. Um, it's going to be a little bit noisy, but we will give it a go. I'll just move this over here out of the way. Now, if we add, need to add another little bit of stock to this, then I can do that. And again, it's just true I might have lost a little bit of evaporation because I was trying to get this cooked tonight. So I, uh, within the time scale, I don't want to be running all night here. So I'm going to get this up and running. Again, then health and safety here, just get your gas off if you're finished with your gas. I'm going to try and puree this and without moving it everywhere. I'm just breaking this down here. Another reason why you would use equal quantities of veg, so it's not a definite flavor of any one particular veg. You have a blend of the veg, and everybody, every every veg in the soup gets to be the star. That's really important, and just for a balance of color as well. It looks like this is going to need a little drop of water over there or stock. So you just hold on there two seconds, and I just get another little drop of water or stock. And just to thin it out, and you can hear my oven's gone off, so I'm just going to pop that back on just for another couple of minutes there. And then we'll just turn our tomato sauce down, and we'll just give this another little bit of puree. pieces left there. So. for seasoning. Okay. So now you can finish this with some creme fraiche if you didn't want to use cream. That's really really nice really beautiful flavor coming out of that. Now what I do want to do we need to season with some salt and pepper so I'm putting some salt in here first. Okay sounds like a lot but not that much and some pepper now 
I like my pepper. Pepper is a spice, yeah? Don't forget that as well. And it used to be more valuable than gold once upon a time. I have a little jug of spoons here that I'm using tonight, and I have them in water. So you'd always, if you taste the soup, which I'm going to do now, okay, that's much better. I put it into my water, and then if I wasn't sure and I needed to taste it again, you get a different spoon. You always get a clean spoon, and we just taste it again. Mmm. So you try not to double dip, which is really, really important there. Okay, so that's one more. We'll put that back there out of the way. Okay, um, that's what we want. Next, what we're going to do is our tomato. Again, I've washed my uh, blender here. Now, you could also use your uh, food processor if you have with a blade and stuff like that to puree these as well. I'm just going to be careful with this because I don't want tomatoes to go everywhere. Now you could leave these chunky, I suppose, if you wanted to as well, if you wanted that chunky texture. I let my kids, and uh, I guess myself, I like the smooth sauce. Again, then you could add a drop of water to this or stock, if you felt that it was a little bit on the thick side still. Checking that out there. I'm going to get my uh, cooling rack out and get that sorted there just to for my bread, which I will show you in a second. Okay, so you want to check this out. We're going to take a look at our bread here. Let me turn that off. Okay, there's a masterpiece coming out. So we're gonna come around this way. There we go, yep. We'll leave the bread there. And we're just gonna check that out. That looks really good. Okay, yeah. And I'm just gonna show you how we would check it there. So I would get my skewer, pop my skewer in, like that. And I always kind of put my fingertips then where it actually goes into the item. Does it come out clean? Yes. Put it to your tongue, or sorry, put it to your bottom lip. And if you've even heat the whole way along, try not to burn yourself now. Then the item is cooked. Okay, and if it comes out dry, a little bit like a cake. Now what I normally do as well, at this point, once it comes out, and that's hot, I would put just a cloth over it. And I would just leave it for about five or 10 minutes. That's gonna be keep cooking. That's gonna keep cooking now for at least another 20 minutes, okay? Now, the thing about this is you need to let this cool, and let it cool down and be cold before you cut it, okay? So, I'm going to push that just forward there, first of all, alright? And you kind of say, I know what you're thinking there, you say, oh my god, I'm not going to get to take, see this amazing bread that you made here tonight. Well, yes you are, because I have some left, I made, uh, like I said, I made a couple of loaves every, uh, during the week. And I have, uh, just to show you there, I have uh, a loaf here that I made uh, the day before yesterday, and I'm just going to slice some of it so you can see it. I just cut some there like that, and you'll be able to see the texture of it. All that needs is just some butter to go with your soup, just like that. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It's so easy to make. I'll leave that there. You can have a wee shot of that, but 
your bread needs to be cold before you try and um, uh, cut it. So, like I said, I have my cloth over that. That's lovely and warm there. It's like a hot water blanket, okay? Um, I'm going to leave it in the tin for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to take it out. I'm going to wrap it in the cloth and then just let it cool down the cloth. And by the morning then, that will be absolutely perfect, okay? So, I'll just come back here and check out, finish our tomato sauce. We get a nice puree, an extra addition of stock or water there. Just gives it the extra kick that it needs. Okay, so we'll just take that off. Okay, turn off our power. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so we're nearly there. Again, we just need to season with some salt. I don't think we need any. We need a little bit of salt in there, remember, with our garlic. So it's important there that you remember that, that you had a little bit of salt in there already. A little bit of pepper there. Okay, like that. Now, we've got to taste it. And then we need to... Lovely and smooth there. Now you could pass that again if you really wanted to make it super fine. Okay, tastes really tomatoey. Tastes fantastic, but it's sharp. There's like acidity in it. And that's just naturally in the tomatoes. How we're gonna finish that or fix that is with some sugar. So we just put a little bit in. Again there. Just gonna get my whisk. Just to give it a mix about. There we go. And then we're just gonna again with a different spoon. We are going to check. Another little bit. You really want to sweeten it up. Let's mix that in. And it's amazing what that sugar does. It really does balance it out. It really does balance it out. So my friends, uh, my subscribers, and everybody else there that is watching me there tonight, or if you see this maybe tomorrow and stuff like that, um, thank you so much for joining me here tonight. Like I said, we made some beautiful wheat and bread. Okay, we'll just show you that there again. Okay. Um, I have the stuff here, a little bit that I cut there. Um, that I made there there for yesterday. What I would do then, just to show you, I'll do this quite quickly. Um, I'll have my loaf. Um, this is going to be quite hot, so I have another one here. And we would just tip this out, give it about 10 minutes there. So it's been greased and floured, so it's really, really important there. Pop straight out, and then we just wrap it in the cloth, here like that. And then I would put it back and just let it Slowly, 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 just let it um, cool down. And then tomorrow morning, that would be amazing there for your breakfast or with your soup there for tomorrow lunch. So we made a fantastic homemade vegetable soup puree. We made a fantastic, um, straight from scratch there, um, tomato sauce. And like I said, we have our fantastic uh, wheat and bread. So that's, just perfect there. Okay, we have our timer just going off. That tells us that is the end of our live link here tonight. Once again, I'd like to thank you very much for joining me here. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed passing on some of the skills that I have and the knowledge that I have to you. Please like, subscribe and share to the channel. Um, if I'd love to hear your comments or if you have any ideas that you want me, of dishes you want me to do in the future, please post them and we will see you very soon again. So this is John Crow here. Uh, signing off for tonight. Everybody stay safe, look out for each other, and we'll see you very soon again. So, 